HEC board, is that what you're looking for? No, I'm on the wrong one. Current agenda. Current, yeah. It's May 20th. I was just on it. Yeah, Here on it that. is. Okay, I got it. Okay, we have a quorum. Call this meeting to order. Welcome, everybody. Could uh, we have a motion to adopt the agenda? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. All right. Minutes of the meeting in March, March of March 26. Can we have a motion to approve those? Oh, wait, I'm do sorry. Do we have public comments? Do we have any public comments? Oh. I don't think we do. Does anybody here want to talk? <laughs> Okay, great. All right, now a uh, motion to approve the minutes of the March 26th meeting. I move approval. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right, we have an action item related to the open meetings resolution. Does everybody have that pulled up? And this indicates that we would have our quarterly, no less than quarterly meetings scheduled for January, April, August, December. Hmm, we haven't really, is Talk this, yeah. It, I think it just means that's the minimum right but we set but we put in it actual months and maybe we shouldn't maybe we should just say why don't we take that out we'll and just adopt it on meetings. at least a quarterly basis okay so so we will meet more than quarterly sometimes yeah so remove january april august december and have this third tuesday do we want to stick with that that's the board That's meeting. That's the board meeting. Which okay. Is fine. All right. So, so can we say third Tuesday or as? Because there's been times that we've been able to change it, right? Yeah. Or do we need to specify? How about we just say uh, preceding the regular board meeting? Can we say that. Yeah, and we can still have meetings anytime we want. Right. Exactly. Just calling yeah. them. Right. All right, so we'll remove the months and, and put preceding the regular board meeting. Rather than say the third Tuesday, preceding the regular board meeting. Right. Then if we right. change the regular board meeting, we'll be okay. Right. So Donna, you have those changes? Sure. I move the open meeting resolution as amended. I second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> All right, the next item is Dr. Gonzalez and the Community Advisory Committee membership. Uh, Mr. President, you have want to say anything about this first? Uh, I'd like to say, uh, Madam Chair, is that uh, we're still in the process of working on this, so Carmen, Dr. Gonzalez, is going to give you a, an update on it, and uh, we will get further along over the summer. Uh, we had a few staffing changes over the past month, and we're just kind of catching up. Okay. In the future, is it possible to get these ahead of time? It's very useful if we have a chance to kind of look at them and sort of see. <clears throat> Madam Chair, um, members of the board, I've been calling Tina for about a week, and she sent it to me today. So you didn't, you, I tried to get it earlier. But so in the future. Yes, in the future, I will try to. Just like with the regular board. <clears throat> right. We just need more advanced copies of it. And one thing that Ch Tina told me is that she talked with President Grissom, and they had decided that to wait until we actually open the building to pursue this. You don't remember that? Okay. I don't, I'm just telling you what she told me. So okay. we weren't, I wasn't going to pursue this right now. Uh -huh. I mean, I think there's other things that I would like to pursue first and that's get a fee structure in place mm -hmm. and then start looking at this as we get closer. And it may be that 
whoever gets hired will take this on. Mm -hmm. I look at Randy, whoever gets hired. <coughs> as soon as possible, yeah, I hear that in your no, voice. No, that, it'll be sometime in the fall, but that I think that'll be fine. And I, I don't mind starting on this list if you want me to call people and check about their availability. Madam Chair, I, I want us to start on this over the summer, but we may not get it fully uh, finished until the fall. Okay. And if there's anybody else besides this list of people that you think would be appropriate, I would appreciate knowing. And there are a few names in there. I mean, there are a few places like Santa Fe Institute that has no name, so I need to look into that. Now, does this, ha I think at the last meeting we had made some recommendations about categories or people on here were they in the and I don't think I see them Chris hadn't you mentioned community members and or something well they have community nonprofits and so um, is that what you were getting at when yeah. you mentioned that okay yes and madam chair we also added the literacy volunteers and ABE so okay. we uh, those were from the uh, conversation we had okay over. And uh, looking at the minutes from that last meeting, there weren't names of right. people put, okay. put forward. So this was what I got from Tina, because I did read in there that Tina was going to bring you a list this month. So this was the list she was going to bring. <clears throat> OK, does anybody have any comments, questions on this? And apparently the board is to be uh, from one person <clears throat> to up to 30 so mm -hmm. this is about 20 and I think that's about right you know one one thing you might consider is when we know what programs are going to be offered um, some experts in that particular discipline might be appropriate to add to the advisory committee if, yeah. mm -hmm. if that works I agree Okay, can then, this is just for information only, mm -hmm. and we'll continue in and I'll work with our September meeting, I I'll, guess. I'll work with Randy on this list, finalizing it and uh -huh. getting in touch with people. So the plan would be to talk to some of these people and try to identify people for the categories over the summer months and see their interest and then okay. revisit this in September. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we, by September, we would have more <clears throat> definite commitments by some of these people, I would hope. You mean for the actual Higher Education Center participation? Mm -hmm. Right. So, so, Madam Chair, uh, I'd, like, I'd hope that in September we bring to you at least a, a list to ask for your approval to appoint as chairs, uh, even though we will continually probably add to it. But sure. we would like to... I hope that we can appoint a committee, an advisory committee, in September so we can have a meeting soon thereafter, even if it may not have the full contingent. And did we identify the issues we want them to be advising on? Um, no. <laughs> we, Madam, well, we did Madam talk Chair. about we did talk we about program areas. A little bit about it programming so madam chair i was going to ask the same question if there was a description of what the advisory area was going to advise on and uh i think we had asked kind of a scope that. sorry i think we had asked for that that's something i'll i'll work on yeah, at least <coughs> to summer i i um we i've been working with the finance people on coming up with the financial structure and we talked about really needing a, a marketing plan, and that should be part of it with real distinct descriptions about, about what the benefit of being a part of this higher education center is. And that'll be both for programs that we're going to try and attract, but it'll also be for people that we want to be on this right. board. So, I mean, if you're going to be calling people to consider being on the advisory council, uh, committee, they said, what am I supposed to do? Or how, how many times are we going to meet? And things, things of those, right? those kinds of things. Yeah. And um, the other question I have, have we asked the other the university, Highlands University or others, to suggest names? Or 
Not as far as I know, but I have not been involved in the day-to-day -day meetings, so I'm not really sure. But we do, we did ask to have a, a partner representative on this committee, and they'd be like an ex-officio member. Yeah, we did talk about that at the last meeting, about not having every single right. college. No, but, yeah, but to have at least a liaison. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we definitely need that. And I think when I do my next meeting with the steering committee, trying to get all these different committees <laughs> straight, with the steering committee, I will bring that up. Uh, I hope to have a meeting sometime in June with some fee structures in place that they can look at and talk about so in which meeting sometime in june and this, this would be the meeting with the uh, steering committee for the partners right. steering committee mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and there was one there was supposed to be one last week i believe and we canceled it because we don't have a fee structure that, right, to right. present so <clears throat> So after that fee structure is developed, that's when you'll begin marketing to uh, other universities or other programs within the universities that we have involved. Right. Okay. Madam Chair, uh, Dr. Gonzalez, is it part of the uh, of the budgeting? Is that part of your also responsibility to inform the the board as to? The budgeting is that is that madam chair uh member Cedillo, we we developed the budget so the budget for operating the center uh is in the budget you approved for the college uh, okay. last month okay what we now have to figure out is how are we going to get revenues from our partners and potentially other partners to help us cover more of those expenses than we will the first year and uh madam chair and uh member Cedillo, we what we did this year is <clears throat> we decided to go ahead with the fee structure that had been in place for the pilot program and just keep it in place for this 13 14 year or 14 15 year because uh, we don't have the other structure in place so that as people right now are planning their budgets they needed to know that so we kept it the same so they knew what to expect so our new fee schedule won't go into effect until July of 2015 Correct, unless unless we get new partners. New partners will have a new be under right. the new fee schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay. And just to let you know, I can't name any names yet, but we actually have some out of state universities of some renown interested in potentially coming here and offering programs. Wow, well, great. So. All right, any other comments, questions on this topic? Well, we may have a different fee structure worked out for online instruction versus uh -huh. right. Right. I um, it was at a Sense. conference yesterday and talked with the NMSU folks about this, and they didn't like the fee structure that currently is in place because the one program they have is totally online, and so they're not even going to be using any of the facilities here. And um. so it's decided, and, and we talked today in our finance meeting that we will have a different fee structure for those that are entirely online. Because the other thing is you can't even tell who the students are from Santa Fe Community College. They could have students from all over the place and they didn't necessarily come through the higher education center. So <clears throat> we will have to, and UNM is another one that does a lot of online. So we'll have to have a, a structure. So they that. may pay both online and on-site. If they, if they have an on-site. Mm -hmm. Perhaps depending on the credit, course credit hour. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot to work on, I guess. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, other comments, questions? But it is a little quieter in the summer, so it's yeah. kind of a good time to get some of this stuff done. Good. Well, thank <clears throat> you for taking it over. All right, then, the next uh, item <coughs> is the construction project report. I drove by today and saw lots of girders up. What happened to our table? It shrunk. <laughs> yeah, really. I don't know. I, don't know. I, that I think we need to get our other table back. Yeah. I'm just realizing yeah. that you're just like this. <laughs> well, thank you, Chairman, members of the board, and President Grissom. Um, thank you for your uh, comments. Um, thank you for allowing us to present before you this afternoon. 
Um, I'd like to give you just a brief update of the project status. Um, this is the HEC, the Higher Education Center Design and Construction Project Status. And if you look up on the screen there, there'll be uh, some rotating photos of the current uh, progress of the building. Um, the project uh, earthwork package is nearing 100% complete. This means that the, uh, excuse me a moment, the chance for large unforeseen surprises cost is minimized. Obviously, uh, <clears throat> the earthwork had a lot of unknowns where the construction is much more predictable and we know uh, we can predict some of the construction attributes the, uh, the, the earthwork is not, therefore that, there was a lot of uh, unknowns there. That's 100% complete, so the chance for unforeseen cost is minimized. The trenching is 100% complete, the geothermal wells are 95% complete, <clears throat> the water lines are about 40% and the retaining walls are 100% completion. All of our third party testing and inspections are 100% complete. Um, that includes both the soil compact testing and all of our concrete testing for uh, pressure and, and uh, rigid, rigid ability. Um, there were 52 requests for information, RFIs. They've been reviewed to date by the design team, all returned without any outstanding issues as of May 19th. So that means our contractor and our design agents are working together with no outstanding issues, which is a good, situ good situation at this point in the project. Seven architects supplemental instructions, ASIs as we refer, have been issued, response to the contractor and he's responded, they've responded to all of them. <coughs> very, we have a very good communication um, between us and our teams. So I'm very, very <coughs> confident that we're getting the word out, everybody's staying engaged and we stay connected, which is a key point until our uh, issues are resolved. The steel erection is moving forward ahead of schedule and top out is scheduled for the week of June 2nd. We're continuing to work the joists, the decking and detailing now. The majority of the structure is up, the steel structure is up. Uh, the slab on grade, which is the entire slab for the, uh, for the building was completed on 517. Water utilities were connected. We're working on the hot box for the winter time. What is that? It's, it's a box that keeps the water utilities lo local controlled for temperature during the winter so we don't have any freeze issues. The electric work continues with the transformer rough in and the dunk back, duck bank installation ongoing. Uh, we're working with PNM. Right now we have temporary power. We're working with PNM to perhaps get permanent power by next month, which would be ideal because we can't really start the review for the photovoltaic array system until we have a transformer energized. So we're trying to expedite PNM to get the track <coughs> energized so they'll review our PV system. The courtyard retaining wall was completed, waterproof and backfilled. Uh, McCarthy indicated that we're actually running a very safe project. I'm pretty confident, consistently uh, gratified with that. Uh, my emphasis at the beginning of the project was safety and I've been holding, holding the crew to that throughout the project. Um, McCarthy indicated one worker was sent home for not wearing safety glasses. No other safety issues have been identified so far. The south entrance will be available for use by, for the contractors by June 16th. We promised Santa Fe University Art and Design. As soon as we could, we'd use the south entrance as opposed to the north. We're going to open that up for a full use on June 16th. Um, another good point, um, our contingency, the owner's contingency is about 400000 and it's still 100% intact. Um, I've maintained that intact and will look to maintain that intact hopefully throughout the project. Now say that again. That's our contingency. That's our contingency. It's, it's 400K and so far to we date. We haven't touched it. We have not touched it. Um, <clears throat> McCarthy's GMP has, has been able to absorb the unforeseen cost some of our dirt blending um, and avoided any change orders. There was um, attributes included in their contract like frost proofing. We didn't need that this winter. There was a lot more money and fees associated with hauling dirt. We didn't have to haul dirt that far, so that was reduced. So those expenditures covered the blending that we had to do, and therefore we didn't touch our contingency monies. The, uh, the construction is on schedule and has not been hampered by any current recent dirt neighbors, city utility issues. We've just dealt with those issues one-on-one -on -one and we've resolved them and we're still on schedule. And what is that date for completion? Uh, the completion date, uh, is January 15, 2015, but the building is actually scheduled to be complete sometime right before Christmas. Mm. <clears throat> uh, we're on schedule and on budget. 
<coughs> approved by the board on July 2013. Um, we had a uh, interesting uh, incident. Uh, Longmire was had approached us to film on the site. They wanted to film two scenes for their upcoming program series, Longmire. We agreed. They uh, offered to uh, compensate us four thousand dollars. McCarthy agreed to uh, to pass their compensation, their portion of the compensation, onto the community college, and we have agreed to use that money for scholarships. So it's going to be a win-win for everybody. The <laughs> actual four thousand in scholarships or eight thousand. Four thousand scholarships. We're going to go in the match program with, a, and hopefully match oh. it with another. But we're going to use it to match the Title Five scholarship for the film program. And that episode is scheduled to come out sometime in mid-July. They just wanted construction in the background yeah. or something? Yeah, part of their, their filming includes the construction of a casino. Ah. So they put a big sign up there that they named it some casino. And so <laughs> in the background, it looks like they're constructing a casino. <laughs> <when they're... laughs> I'm hear from the press. <laughs> um, that's an update on the project. Just to give you kind of a heads up uh, on a lot of the work that's going on campus as well, if you... Just step out the balcony there, like Member Romero just did. There's a working crew out there. We're actually replacing the roof uh, uh, on this west wing. It's half of a million dollar project. The fitness center has already been completed. That was the first half, and this is the second half. And this was all funded from GOB 2012 money. It was a million dollar project. And that's all I have. Chris? Henry, um, so what, um, how big are the signs? Do we have big signs that tell people that this is the future um, higher education center? Um, yes, sir. Um, Where are they? I, I mean, I've, I've cruised by a lot on, on Seringo and I haven't seen them. Members of the board. Um, actually, the signs um, was part of the budget that was a little bit low to actually complete all of our tasks. Um, we have the interior signage. We're working that right now. We have a contractor who's providing all of our interior signage. We have, there are two monument signs um, that will be outside the building, one on the north entrance and one on the southwest entrance. Okay. And those monument signs will be, uh, will have interchangeable displays. So in the future, if we have um, uh, future partners, we can actually add them onto our signs. Yeah. Um, we also will have a sign hanging on the building that will identify Santa Fe Community College and some of our partners. Right. Well, you know, I, ju I just meant like the... You know, like the cardboard. Oh, you mean the construction signage? Yeah. Telling the people oh. what, what, what it is. Oh, it's, there is some signage on the south side, and there's also signage on the fence on the north side. Have you, I've seen one. It has a map and a picture of HEC, and it, of course, has all their, their building requirements, their, their building permits, and their safety uh, signage as well. Yeah, okay. I, I hadn't seen it. I would just... It, it's, it's out there on the north fence and on the southwest fence. Okay. And Kathy? Um, a quick question about communications with our neighbors at the University of Art and Design. Um, because they are the closest neighbors and the most impacted by the construction, do we have some way to be in communication with them on a regular basis so if they do have concerns, they know who to reach out to yes, and we can I, address them? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, um, uh, Madam Chairman and members of the board, um, Madam Keith, yes, uh, we have uh, reached out several times uh, as well as you all. Um, Member mm -hmm. Siegel and President Grissom have gone out and met with uh, with their president. I have met with Peter Romero. He's their facilities director as well. I'm on a regular communication with him. He gets our um, meeting updates from our project status, and I meet with him, try to meet with him at least once a month. Okay. So we have open lines of communication. We're okay. definitely communicating with Peter Romero and also with the city as well. Thank you. Mr. You're welcome. President, you have anything to add to that? <laughs> We, we, and we are also working on a memorandum of agreement that we need to get back to them on uh, to do that. But I think Henry's done a really good job of keeping them informed. We had to close the road recently for, to do the water connection. And uh, I think the work that Henry had done uh, with Peter uh, smoothed that issue out. I think the fact that Longmire used our side helped because they were concerned about hmm. some of the uh, film crews that might be using the screen in other areas and the fact that we've made sure to work with them and help out that that helped martha did you Adam? yeah I, how long will the casino <coughs> sign be up oh it's gone no it was only up for two hours they only filmed they filmed they filmed for four hours they put their temporary lights up they put all their signage and after they were done they took everything it was their i was worried we'd start getting calls from them oh. <laughs> saying yeah, yeah. no they they were yeah, rapid to get a picture of that <laughs> A gamble. A gamble. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't inappropriate. <laughs> no. 
especially since we get a scholarship out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Madam, Madam so, Chair, yeah. um, the $4,000 towards the scholarships, is that forthwith? Can we get that money? Because we have the foundation, I think, has uh, 30 scholarships. And uh, Madam Chair, Mr. <clears throat> Member Cedillo, it is going towards the 30. Okay, good. So it's going okay. to be one of the endowed scholarships through the Title V. So their okay. 4,000 is going to be matched with 4,000. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions? All right, we'll look forward to the next update. You bet. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, our next item is election of officers. So. I would like to make a motion that we, um, Chris be the chair, Kathy the vice chair, Martha the secretary, in the order of our rotation. Is there a second? I second that. All right. Any discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carries. And that's all we have. Right. For this board meeting. All right. So can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? I move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Motion carries.